ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. It's an ACC Coastal Division showdown, hoping to live up to the offensive theatrics of last year's meeting between North Carolina and Georgia Tech, which was the highest scoring game in conference history. 68 to 50, won by Tech. They combined for 16 touchdowns in this game. And over 1,000 yards of total offense. They passed Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville. A steady rain for the last 90 minutes or so. And so, Bobby Dodd Stadium about half full here as we get ready for kickoff. Brian, what are you looking forward to seeing in this ball game here? Well, with so many offensive fireworks last year and now we have some rain, how will these two offenses handle that? The option is very difficult to execute in the rain. A lot of different mesh points, opportunities uh, to turn that football over. And for North Carolina, they have had no running game, so they almost exclusively depend on Bryn Renner. How will it affect their passing game? Georgia Tech has won the toss, elected to defer. That's Ryan Switzer, a true freshman, who's back deep to receive the kick. T.J. Thorpe, who returns kicks and punts is hurt did not make the trip also North Carolina which only has 68 scholarship players down a, a tight end Jack Tab suspended that was announced before the game will be suspended two games Sean Tapley the other return man he's got it across the 10 and Tapley to the outside Tapley passed the 40 yard line terrific starting field position for the Tar Heels. It was the kicker, Harrison Buckner, to make the tackle there. Uh, Bryn Renner, after a school record 28 touchdown passes a year ago, through two games has been disappointing, according to his coaches. Yeah, and he really struggled. Obviously, a very tough assignment uh, in the opener on the road against South Carolina, Jigdavian Clowney, and, and that front four for South Carolina. He's been under pressure. He's got three new offensive linemen. Obviously, loses Jonathan Cooper. And so, in this game, he's got to take that step forward. Relax throw that ball and be efficient in the pocket. And a penalty flag down. Substitution foul. Georgia Tech has 12 men on the field. So it'll be first and five for North Carolina at its 47-yard line. Carolina one and one lost to South Carolina in the opener beat middle Tennessee two weeks ago They had a bye week entering this one on the run from our Morris going nowhere loses yardage It's a two-yard setback Well, Big in this game will be Eric Ebron He's the best player on Carolina's offense from the tight end position They'll feature him in all different kinds of sets and try to get the football to him and for Georgia Tech Jeremiah Talchu no surprise there, the best pass rusher, one of the best in the ACC. One of seven senior starters on defense for Tech. Renner, and that pass low, incomplete, intended for Morris. Good coverage downfield. So it's third down and seven. And you get a great return on the opening kickoff, and then you get a penalty against the defense. And the first two plays for North Carolina, one's a negative run, and then a pass that had no chance of being completed. Carolina last year was a terrific offensive team, but they had a great back in Gio Bernard, who you saw Monday Night Football with the Bengals. Also a Jonathan Cooper, a guard that was a top 10 draft pick. They lost a lot on the offensive side of the ball. They need Runner to make plays today. This is one right here, third and seven. Runner with time. Ebron on the grab and a first down inside the 40. There is a penalty marker down on the far side. That was a terrific throw by Renner. And a great route by Ebron. A double move on the inside where he got by the linebacker. There is a flag, flag, flag on the play. I apologize for the audio issues there, but clearly offside and decline. So first down, Carolina. But here's Ebron. He's just going to run a hitch and go, and he got right behind Quashon Neely. Very disciplined player. He's very smart, understands coverages, how teams are going to play him both in man and zone. That time he got zone, didn't rush the route, and a big conversion for North Carolina. Ebron, second team all ACC in 2012. Runner to throw on first down. And flushed out of the pocket. And got a man. 
Ebron again on the catch at the 29-yard line. So a pickup of seven on the play. D.J. White in coverage. Second down and short. We were talking with Blake Anderson, the North Carolina offensive coordinator, last night. He said that Eric Ebron is going to be a focus in this game. Without the offensive line that they had a year ago, without Gio Bernard, they've got to find a playmaker, and Ebron has got to be the guy for them today. Renner in the traffic. It's caught. First and goal, Quinshot Davis, a six foot four inch receiver, one of several real tall guys at receiver, makes the grab. One of the things I like best about Bren Renner's anticipation look at that, there's not a big window there. There's a very small place that ball could be put, and Renner does a great job of anticipating and trusting the receiver is going to be in that right spot. Carolina was up there to snap the ball, then backed off to get the check from the sideline after a 20 yard pass play. First and goal on the eight. Tauchu jumps, and so did the left tackle James Hurst, but that's got to be on the defense. So another penalty, half the distance to the goal. All started with the runner converting that third down and seven. And now the Tar Heels with a first and goal inside the five-yard line. Here's Morris trying to get the pylon. He does. Touchdown, North Carolina. An impressive opening drive on the road for the Tar Heels. Romar Morris is on the track team at North Carolina, and you'll see why. It's just a foot race between he and Quayshon. Neely to the pylon, and Neely is not going to win that race. Carolina spreading it out here. And looks like they're going to go for two. Tommy Hibbard fakes, now throws to the long snapper, and it's incomplete. Actually, it was Thomas Moore, the kicker. The long snapper stayed in. Why would you do that? Two and a half minutes into the game. No idea. Great opening drive by the Tar Heels. Now we'll see the Georgia Tech high-octane offense and a lot of cut blocking today. When you're watching this game, keep your eyes on the defenders for North Carolina. How many are on the ground? Last year, Georgia Tech did a phenomenal job of getting guys on the ground, not only in the front line, but also on the second level. Take a look at some of these blocks on the perimeter. One of the hardest things to do is cut a guy downfield. You see the big offensive lineman, Mason, getting downfield, creating lanes for this offense. And then earlier, before the game, we saw North Carolina working on these cut blocks. These are the linebackers, Staub and Schottmer, working on these blocks. They've been working all week and the off week on these cut blocks. We'll see if they can play well today. Nick Weiler's kickoff grabbed on one hop by Golden. And Golden across the 25 and pushed out of play just short of the 30-yard line. And what does Carolina need to do? Well, they first of all have to have the right attitude. A year ago, they didn't come into this game with the right attitude, knowing that they're going to get cut. It's going to be a long day. You've got to anticipate that and be up to that challenge. You've got to play off that cut block. Get your hands on that cutter and keep him off of your legs. And then lastly, after you get off that block, you've got to go make the play in space. Do you think it's safe to use the word hate when describing how defenses feel about playing against this offense? I think hate would not be a strong enough word. <laughs> See how they react after last year giving up 68 points of the Rebels and all on the defense. Badly throwing deep on first down and overthrows the fullback, B.J. Bostic. Badly last week through four touchdown passes, the most by a Georgia Tech quarterback since 2006. Some feel maybe he's the best passer that uh, Paul Johnson's had in his six years here at Georgia Tech. Paulson told us yesterday, look, we, we need to settle down here on the height on Bad Lee. Well, don't expect four touchdown passes today. <laughs> Let's make that point. But, uh, no, clearly Bad Lee is a very talented player with his feet, and now he adds that extra element of being able to throw the ball off play action. On second down, a big hit at the point of attack as David Sins is nailed by Norkethus Otis. It's third down and long. 
This is the matchup to watch today. I want to see how Robert got high. He's 5'7", 190 pounds, but he is a dynamic player. One of the keys in this offense, both running the football, but also catching it out of the backfield and blocking. How well does Trey Boston, the safety, play off of Godhai's blocks on the perimeter and get to the ball carrier? That'll be a big key. And Georgia Tech on a third down and long. You would assume a pass play with most offense, but offenses, but not necessarily tap, although Lee will let it fly here into double coverage, and that pass almost caught. It was right there, intended for Corey Dennis. And there was Boston, the guy you just talked about, in coverage, and it's fourth down. Yeah, Boston looked like he got there a little early. That easily could have been called. Pass interference got that right hand in there early. He's lucky to get away without a penalty. So a three and out for the Yellow Jackets, and now a punt coming from Sean Poole. Only his fourth punt of the season. They beat Alon 70 to nothing, so they didn't need him week one, and then they beat Duke 38-14 in week two. And Ryan Switzer is the deep man. Reason it's 6-0 if you're just turning it on. North Carolina faked the extra point, went for two, and almost got a blocked punt there. And he failed on the conversion, obviously. Switzer backing up. He had signaled for a fair catch, so it'll be Carolina ball inside their own 20. When we come back to Atlanta, 6-0 road team. Congrats. This is College Football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. Back in Atlanta with Tom Lugan built down on the field. Dave Pash and Brian Greasy in the booth. 6-0 North Carolina. An impressive opening drive by the Tar Heels. Bryn Renner, 3 of 4 passing. What would you think? Uh, it obviously came out very, very smooth, very calm. they got to be confident. Bryn Renner does. They scored 50 points against this team a year ago, so they know that they can move the football. they just got to make sure they take care of it in the rain. He's a guy that last year had a terrific season, but the coaches said... Looks shaky against South Carolina week one. And then Middle Tennessee, not really a good gauge. And this time he's off target, intended on the play for Mark McNeil. Incomplete. Let's bring in Tom. Well, guys, you know, offensively it was a great start, but I think the infusion of enthusiasm because the defense forced a three and out only adds to the hop and the step we're seeing from this North Carolina offense right now. And they got in third and seven loops on that opening drive, and Renner was able to make a play. And he's changing things up here on second down and ten. He's just still trying to figure out who his weapons are in offense other than Ebron. Here's a pitch to Morris, and a hole. Morris across the 35. Stays in bounds. Actually, they're going to spot him back at the 41. Still, it's a 22-yard run for Romar Morris. Take a look at the block by Ebron right there in the middle of your screen. He got great block on Brandon Watts, the linebacker, and Mora, Morris uh, stepped out of bounds there. You get Romar Morris in the open field, and that speed starts to take over. They've been trying to find that guy to replace Gio Bernard, and maybe Romar Morris is the guy. And a timeout call here by Georgia Tech. Actually, it looked like he may have stepped out of bounds a few yards short of the 40-yard line. They spotted him out at the 41. Back in a moment. The Hoover Dam's power plant uses smart grid technology to conserve energy when it can and make more when needed. The Georgia Tech rec racing team, which competes in professional races, they won the competition in 2010. Paul Johnson, the team went 7-7 seven and seven a year ago, even though they played in the ACC title game because Carolina and Miami were ineligible. Here's Renner on first down and 10, and it's broken up and incomplete. Ebron, the intended receiver. Lewis Young broke up the pass, and Jamal Golden hurt on the play. Well, Bryn Renner is so good at anticipating. He knew the blitz was coming. He knew that Ebron was running a corner route, so he just tried to buy time and then throw it up. The problem is the corner did a great job. Lewis Young did a great job of reading that play and coming off and making a play. Otherwise, it would have been a big completion to Ebron. Renner, three of six. He's missed his last two. From the Carolina 47-yard line, 6 nothing Tar Heels. Renner with all day to throw, and that is a perfect pass that's dropped by Quinshaw Davis. 
Hard to get that throw with three defenders surrounding Davis. He just dropped it. Well, this is just a bench route, and the quarterback's reading the corner. You see the corner right there, perfectly thrown ball. And Quinshaw Davis has got to come up with that football, playing simple. So a third down until they converted a third and seven earlier. The 11 play run by Carolina so far here in just over four minutes. Had some big plays already. Gains of 19, 20, and 23 for North Carolina. Runner hit and completes it. Ebron took a shot as well from Jamia Thomas. Both guys are okay. First down. Well, we knew John Heck, the right tackle, is going to have a hard time on a Talchu, and there's your first example. Again, a great throw under pressure. Anytime that Bryn Renner's in trouble, he's going to look for his security blanket, and that's Eric Ebron. A.J. Blue motions out of the backfield. They'll throw it to him here, and he dropped it. That was a forward pass. Smart play by Hunt Days, though, to jump on it just in case, as it is a reviewable play, but clearly a forward pass, second and ten. And keep an eye on that, that matchup between Otalcho and Heck on the right side. They're also playing another redshirt freshman, Caleb Peterson, at the left guard position. He's trying to fill the mighty shoes of Jonathan Cooper, a first-round draft pick, so... Keep an eye on that defensive line, that rush against a young offensive line. They had a Talchu matched up with James Hurst, who held his own against Clowney week one. Trying to find a running lane is Blue. And he's stacked up and then slammed down at the 41-yard line by D.J. Watt. Pick up a four. Another third down coming up for North Carolina. Right, North Carolina's got to find a consistent back in the running game. They were so dependent on Gio Bernard a year ago, and they can't rely so much on the arm of Bryn Renner. They've got to have a complimentary back that can rush the football. Carolina two of two on third down so far. Third down and six. Renner with time, and the pass was off target, incomplete. Sean Tapley beat his man, but the throw was out of bounds. They beat him badly on a slant and go. It's called a sluggo, and that's a staple of this offense. They'll run an individual route on a weak side. You just got to throw that ball inbounds. If that ball is inbounds, it's a touchdown. As a result, they got a punt. Brenna was one of six on that drive after a three for four start. So Tommy Hibbard, the punter, drew the pass on that two-point conversion try. Trying to pin Tech deep, and beautifully done. North Carolina there to down it at the five. Let's go to the studio and check in with Reese Davis. Good afternoon, Dave. Time for the Taco Bell Live Moss moment. And Braxton Miller out again, sitting out, not starting for Ohio State against Florida a and Kenny Guyton is filled in just fine, thank you. Jeff Hireman going into the end zone. His first touchdown catch of the season. And oh, by the way, the Red Sox did beat the Blue Jays and clinch the American League East. Now you mentioned Ohio State. They've got big tests coming up next week. Wisconsin and Columbus then two weeks from today at Northwestern, which is playing good ball. Georgia Tech first down and ten on its five-yard line. They bring Bostic in motion and pitch it to him. And Bostic nailed out of play around the nine-yard line. Tom? Yeah, guys, Paul Johnson, he's calling plays from the sideline, and what he's doing is he's substituting running backs. He's not concerned about the play clock. He wants that play clock to roll down. So you'll see him wait till the last few moments, run that back in, and the back will relay the play to Vad Lee so they can bring the clock down to where they want it and have communication. No hand signals, no fast pace. They're going to dictate terms through their substitution. On second and six, they run Sim straight ahead and he powers for the first down out to the 18 it's a nine yard gain very unique approach by Paul Johnson to game plan and what he does in game in terms of calling plays yeah I love watching Paul Johnson he's a master of his craft this is a you don't see this kind of uh, offensive style and philosophy very often but uh, Paul Johnson knows exactly what he wants to do on each and every play and he knows in his head what his counter move is to how the defense is playing his option and he's the best at it Here's Lee trying to pick a hole and well defended. And a couple of yards there, tackled by Tim Jackson. I found it interesting in talking with Johnson yesterday that he watches the film by himself. He lets his assistants take their time. He says, they can't keep up with me. And then he'll come in with his thoughts. 
His assistants will put their thoughts on the board, and that's it. That's the game plan. Yeah, there's no uh, call sheet, uh, and he's the only one that's making these calls, and, and he's watching. He knows on each play who the read is on, on defense, so he's watching that player, and how that player reacts dictates what the next call is. Lee on the rollout and the late pitch, and tripped up Sims. Uh, Sinjin Days, rather. No gain on the play. It'll bring up third down and seven. Jabari Price made the play and run support. Johnson sending in the play with uh, Robert Godhock. The only problem with sending the plays in like this is you're dependent on the on the player you gave that play to to say it again to the quarterback. And you've got a couple of different checks and balances there. Hopefully you got your guys that know the plays, but your quarterback has to make make it right at the end of the day. If something comes in wrong, he has to know the formation and know the play call. Game of telephone <laughs> gone all wrong. Here's Sims, and he couldn't catch up to the pass there. A screen attempt on third down and six, and it was not a good throw by Lee. So it's fourth down. And this offense uh, is a rhythm offense. They get a couple of first downs, and then they start to wear you down. They just have sputtered here in the first two drives, a three and out. They get one first down, and then that, that play was actually set up pretty nicely on the screen, and that lead just couldn't get it to the running back. Sean Poole's second punt. He had three the first two games combined. And is that a fake? Yep, it's a fake and a flag for a hole. This is coming back. Poole was waiting. I'm assuming he was reading, and then Rokitas Otis may have just gotten kicked out of the game. Otis was on top of a Georgia Tech player at the 15-yard line, Sean Tobin, the long snapper, who was holding Otis while the punter, Sean Poole, was waiting to determine whether he would punt the ball or run. And there are two flags, one for the hold on Georgia Tech and the other that's going to be on Otis. He was on top of Tobin and would not get off. It looked like Poole was trying to make a decision whether to punt the ball or run for the first down. Ultimately, he would have got a first down. The penalty would have negated that first down, and so North Carolina would have uh, got, they would have had to punt again, but the uh, penalty from Otis for, I think it was a, basically a taunting foul, not getting off of that player on the ground. And that's what they're discussing. Was it a taunt, first down? Or was it a fight? Did he throw a punch, which would result in an ejection? As we mentioned, holding the offense, we're reading lips here. Unsportsmanlike, yeah. So automatic first down for Georgia Tech because of the taunt after the play. And here he is. Right here is Keefit. The hold is right there on the left. Although I thought that was a pretty good block, but either way, you get a first down. Yeah, that's the taunt. I think that's also where the hold took place. It also looked from that angle like Poole was holding Otis on top of him. Well, what you didn't see there at the end is he stood up and was saying something to Poole on the ground, and, and I think that's what the uh, referee got him for. So after all that, Georgia Tech with a first and 10 on its 27. And Lee to throw. Instead takes off, breaks a tackle. And it takes four or five Tar Heels to finally get him down. Lee got a push from an offensive lineman who came in and helped. Lee lost his helmet. He's going to have to come out of the game for a play here. He's yelling and screaming at the Carolina defenders as he goes to the sideline. There is no question who the leader of this Georgia Tech team is, and it's number two right there. This game hasn't started as well as he would have liked, but that play right there and his energy could spark this crowd and spark this team. But now Justin Thomas is in the game. Although Paul Johnson told us yesterday, was it really a competition in camp between Lee and Thomas, who is a freshman from Alabama, originally committed to Alabama. And Sims, ankle tackled at the 40-yard line, and a penalty flag down as well. It was Jeff Schottmer who made the stop. Bad lead back out there after 
having to sit one play because of the lost lid. Got a lot of stuff going on here in the first quarter. A lot of laundry out there, too. <laughs> so no flag for illegal block below the waist. That's a gain of five. They'll spot it at the 42-yard line. I'll tell you, everybody for Georgia Tech's going to be blocking below the waist. So, yeah. <laughs> it's probably hard to determine for the official, right? Whether it's legal well, you or know illegal. Well, you got to know where they line up, right? I mean, there's a lot of different rules and stipulations as to who can block below the waist, and so that official needs to be on top of it as to where these guys are lined up initially and whether they are legal to block below the waist. Are you back under center for second down and five? It's Sims, lowers his head, and gets the first down. Out near the 48-yard line, Kareem Martin on the tackle, along with Ethan Farmer. David Sims rushed for over 600 yards and four touchdowns. He lost a helmet, so he's coming out for a play. Zach Lasky runs out of the field. He was their leading returning rusher. Close to 700 yards last year. Yeah, they've got two really good B-backs. The B-back lines up right behind the quarterback. And between Sims and Lasky, there's Lasky right here. That's the B-back. Both of those guys are very capable runners. From the Tech 48, first and 10. It's Lasky, first man through. Great effort on the run. Keeps the feet churning. And gets to midfield for a gain of a couple on the play. Schottmer in there first for North Carolina. So far, I've been impressed with North Carolina's defensive front. They knew coming in, they're going to get cut, they're going to get cut, and they're going to get cut some more. And so far, they've been up to the challenge. They've got two stops now because of Otis's penalty. Obviously, they're still on the field, but the two initial stops against this offense, a really good start. Second down and seven for Georgia Tech. Tenth play of the drive. Lasky again wrestled to the ground at the 46-yard line. Gain of four. Schottmer makes another tackle. Walk-on starting at linebacker. They get several walk-ons who start on this defense, but so far, the deep's playing well, certainly much better than it did in the meeting with Tech last year. And I think Paul Johnson is going to continue to be disciplined. They want to get the inside run going first. That's the key to this offense, and then all of the options and perimeter runs come off of that, and for the last three plays in a row we've seen internal runs one pass on this possession and it's a run here on third down and four and Lasky appears to have another first down at the 42 Travis Hughes wrapped him up must be nice when third and four and you can turn around and hand it to the b-back get a first down let's go to Reese in the studio Live Yes for Moss, I deliver Moss. Taco Bell Live Moss moment. Teddy Ball game. Teddy Bridgewater and Louisville taking on Florida International. Now, check out this catch by Devontae Parker. We're going to have to look at the replay. The, the official says, no, you're out of bounds. Replay shows that the official was mistaken. What a grab and a play. Touchdown, Louisville. And yeah, meanwhile, Reese, Georgia Tech running the ball in first and 10. David Sims brought down immediately by Kareem Martin. Carolina saying that the ball was fumbled, but Sims down, so it's second down and 10 after no game. Georgia Tech's drive started at its own five. It was extended because of the unsportsmanlike penalty on Norkethus Otis of North Carolina. And a fake punt by Georgia Tech. And they fumble the exchange, and North Carolina's got it. Darius Lipford comes up with it. Tar Heel ball. It's wet out. You have got to take care of the details. Jay Finch, the center, Vad Lee, the quarterback, and you got a pulling guard, and the, the exchange was not was not there. And then the guard hits the hits the ball out of the hands. I don't think the ball ever touched the, ball, the ground. It looks like when, when that center's holding that ball back there, what, what happens is the quarterback has not gotten it clean. And the center still has it. He's still trying to hold it there for the quarterback to take. And, And Renner on the run. Not fleet of foot like Bad Lee, but he picks up five. 
Offensively, Georgia Tech, Paul Johnson as well, very frustrated. They are so used to putting so much strain on defenses because they have so many options and answers. And right now, a lot of heads hanging, hanging, coming to the sideline. Very frustrated, including Coach Paul Johnson. Let's see how the defense responds here, getting back on the field with a short field. Second and four. And Renner to throw. Here comes Atalchu. And Renner takes off. And slides. He appears to have the first down. Euclid Cummings was gaining on Renner. He got down in a hurry. It is a first down for North Carolina. Well, we, we mentioned Atalchu, and he is going to be a thorn in the side of Bryn Renner all day. They, when he's matched up on James Hurst, the left tackle, North Carolina feels good. When he goes to the other side and is lined up on Heck, that's a huge advantage for Tech. The quick pitch, and Morris shaking tackles. Finally down by Golden, a few yards short of the first down. Good play on first down. Seven-yard pickup, Morris to the sideline, and A.J. Blue back in the game. We'll also see true freshman Chris Francis, Durham, North Carolina, who the coaches liked after watching him get 10 carries with two against Middle Tennessee. Second down and three. And Renner with a quick throw to the flat for Switzer. And Switzer has the first down right at the 30-yard line, a six-yard pickup. That was a great throw from Bryn Renner, just a sweep, basically a running play, but that is a very difficult pass to throw when it's dry. It's the most difficult pass a quarterback has to throw is a guy running directly away from you, and when it's wet, it's even more difficult. They go out of an empty set here. Another quick toss into the flat. This time it's Blue. And Blue spins out of a tackle. Bumped out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Guys, right now on the Georgia Tech defensive sideline, they're holding up a single card. It's a card for the entire defense to look to the sideline and get the call. No verbiage, no wording. They know they've got to deal with the pace. Now, Ted Roof talked to us yesterday, the defensive coordinator, about realizing they could be at some scheme disadvantages because who they're stuck with on the field. But they want to make sure they're at least aligned right and can quickly get the call in. Ted Roof, Boots, like you played here at, at Georgia Tech, Unlike you, he's in the Hall of Fame at, at Georgia Tech. He was at Penn State <laughs> oh, as the D coordinator last year, and then was at Auburn when they won the national title. But he says he's back home. A tumultuous situation last year in Atlanta with Al Gro, the defensive coordinator, getting fired after a two and four start, and Tech turning it around to make a bowl game. First and 15, inside a minute to go. Runners pass is caught by Quinshot Davis. Had a drop earlier, but not this time. That's a 16-yard gain and a first down. Uh, Quinshot Davis is that playmaker at the wide receiver position between he and Ebron. Those are the go-to guys for Bryn Renner. And another first down inside the 20 for Carolina. Renner waiting. Now fires end zone. A one-handed play. Caught. Touchdown, Ebron! You see why so many scouts in the NFL are excited about this kid. Tremendous hands, great ability to finish at the end. It's a double move on the inside, and no pass rush on Bryn Renner allowed him the time to wait for Ebron to break down the middle late. Thomas Moore on for the conventional point after, and Georgia Tech was offside. So let's see if uh, North Carolina this takes the point here. And they will. So it is 13-0 after a beautiful grab by Eric Ebron, who set the school record for catches by a tight end a year ago. Police, this car is finished. 90,000 hard miles. But I'm hoping for another 300,000. They used Mobile One for performance. I use it to keep my cars running like new. I run Mobile One in my own car. Eric.
Derek Ebron his first touchdown catch of the season, and Carolina leads the Yellow Jackets 13 to nothing. They've had five plays on offense of 15 yards. I'll check that. Yeah, five plays of 15 yards or more. Here in the first quarter, Georgia Tech, which scored 68 points last year against North Carolina. Nothing so far. Here's Snotty on the return, and he won't make it to the 20. Let's go back and look at the touchdown. They line up Ebron like a wide receiver. Here he is. He's just going to come down and act like he's going to run an in route and then go up the field, and the reaction from the safety on the initial route, that's DeMond Smith. Wide open, and then that ball thrown high, just high enough for him to go and make up and make a play. If I had a player like that, I'd throw him the ball at every snap. Now, Todd McShay has him uh, number two among NFL prospects at a tight end position. There's a penalty flag down. So we may have a re-kick situation here with 22 seconds remaining. In the opening quarter, 13-0, North Carolina. And what we were talking with the coaches from Carolina. They were worried about the attitude and how this team was going to come out here and react. And so far, it's been as good as they could have ever hoped for. And, you know, you got to give them, give them credit, obviously, with the amount of players that they have lost because of the sanctions from the NCAA. And they have come out and took the first punch at Georgia Tech, and Bryn Renner's been a big part of it. It was a five-yard penalty on North Carolina for being offside on the kick, and Georgia Tech electing to make the Tar Heels real re-kick after watching what Weiler did on the first kick, which came up short to about the six-yard line. Again, it's snotty and golden deep for Georgia Tech. This one stays in bounds. And Golden with a good return. Able to tiptoe the sideline. He stepped out at the 37-yard line. Undefeated SEC West rival square up tonight on ESPN. Nick Marshall and Auburn against Zach Mettenberger and LSU. Boy, Mettenberger looks like a different quarterback this year. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. 7.45 at ESPN. How much do you credit Cam Cameron from what we're seeing on a Mettenberger so far? Uh, pretty much most of it. You know, I mean, we, we did those games a, a year ago, and Mettenberger didn't, didn't have the opportunity to throw the ball a whole lot and Cam Cameron's brought in a different philosophy and trusts and believes in his quarterback and you're seeing the dividends. Lee with the pitch to Boston and a defender on the ground makes the tackle. Jabari Price with the hit. A great job by Price of playing the cut block and making the tackle. That's been a key for North Carolina. And a terrific opening quarter for the road team. 13-0 Tar Heels. North Carolina associate head coach and in charge of defense, Vic Coning, one of the more entertaining coaches we talked to over the course of a year. He wasn't real happy yesterday when we were meeting with him, talking about his defense so far, but they've done a great job through one quarter of play, especially in comparison with last year against Georgia Tech against the run, allowing 380 yards. 48 rushing yards given up, no passing yards allowed in the first quarter. And second and eight for Georgia Tech, and Lee throws, and it's caught for a first down and more by Smelter. Smelter, who originally came to Tech on a baseball scholarship, his first year as a receiver, and it's a big play to the 35-yard line. Yeah, Smelter had been working in the offseason with Vad Lee just to get on the same page because he hadn't played any football, just been a baseball player, and great feel there not to run too far upfield into the safety, but just sit in the hole, allow Vad Lee to get that football on and make a play. He was a pitcher who had some arm issues. As Georgia Tech goes to the diamond formation here. 
And Lee hands it off to Dennis Andrews. Slips down at the 31, a gain of four. What does this do for Tech's offense going with this formation, Brian? You know, this is something we saw for the first time from Georgia Tech last week against Duke. They've been practicing it since the spring. And what they do basically is bring their two wings, which is a traditional flex bone, into the backfield. And they have Bad Lee in a pistol formation, which allows him to see the defense a little bit better. Traditional option play here. Lee gets walloped at the 28-yard line. A big hit that time by Walker. And a clean hit. You play an option team, you want to hit the quarterback. And that's done about as good as you possibly can. Didn't hit him in the head. Those kinds of hits will take their toll during the course of the game, and already Vad Lee's got to come out catch his breath on the sideline. So Justin Thomas will be out there for his second play. He had to come in in the first quarter when Bad Lee lost his helmet. Third down and three. It'll be Sims getting the first down. Rips through the secondary. All the way to the nine-yard line. A 19-yard run. These cut blocks are starting to take their toll. It's just going to be right up the middle. You're going to see three or four Carolina guys on the ground. On the second level, missed tackles. Sims goes 225 pounds and six feet tall. Very difficult to get on the ground. Lee's still on the sideline, so another play here for Richard freshman Justin Thomas. And again, it's Sims, the first man through, greeted by Kareem Martin. So no gain on the play. What do you got for us on Bad Lee, Tom? Guys, he just took a shot to the midsection, really just knocked the wind out of him. He was over on the bench. Trainer Jay Shoup attending to him. He'll be fine. Should be coming right back in. Got his helmet back on. Second down and goal. Or excuse me, third down and goal at the seven-yard line. As good as Bad Lee has been, early in this season. They feel very good about Justin Thomas. He brings a little bit of a different element to the table. He's a little bit more elusive and quick in the backfield. It is second down. The scoreboard here has it as third down, but it is second down and goal. Here's a pitch. Sinjin days to the corner and out of bounds. Inside the five-yard line at the two. Third down and goal from the two coming up. Looks like they're going to let Justin Thomas stay in the game. Now, how do you handle this? Because he's a guy that has a throw to pass. But badly, and there you have the option to throw. I don't think you're going to see a pass either way. Uh, this is where they love to run the quarterback, and a lot of times they'll run the quarterback and follow the B-back into the hole. Badly scored twice already this season in that fashion. And Thomas has Sims behind him. And it's Sims who gets stood up at the one-yard line by Travis Hughes. Fourth down and goal, Georgia Tech. Still scoreless, and it appears they're going to go for it and bring Vad Lee back into the game. Paul Johnson going to call timeout to talk about it first. Should they go for it? Why not? You're down 13 uh, nothing at home, and this is bad weather. You're down there. would love to get seven points. Guys, just standing next to Paul Johnson right here, he's extremely frustrated with his offensive line. If you've noticed, we talked so much about playing the cut block, but guys within the tackle box have not been on the ground for North Carolina on defense. And about three yards from me right here on that previous play, he's screaming, we are not blocking anybody. So very frustrated with his offensive front at this time. Well, he didn't block either of the inside linebackers on that last play, and no matter how good you are if you're David Sims, 225 pounds, you can't run over two unblocked guys. So they, those offensive linemen have got to get to the second level. Right now, the defensive line for Carolina is submerging and taking those guys and allowing the second level linebackers to flow to the football. And Brian, you referenced earlier the ability to stop the inside run, whether it's the A-gap run between the center and guard or B-gap run between the guard and tackle. It's apparent North Carolina is not going to allow that to happen to them today. Guys, it looked like Paul Johnson was going to send Vad Lee back in the game, but he's holding him out here, so it is Justin Thomas, the freshman quarterback, as Tech goes for it on fourth down and goal from the one. And it's Sims, leaps, lost the ball, 
It's scooped up by Carolina. Dominique Green with the fumble recovery. Trey Boston popped it loose, but now they're saying touchdown. One official, the linesman, is saying it's a touchdown. So the ruling on the field will be a touchdown. Let's see, did the ball cross the plane before it came out? Wow. Well, you're exactly right. The ruling is going to be critical. The previous play is under further review. Because he extended that football, had it in his hands, extended that ball, and it looked like he had crossed the goal line. And one official said touchdown. It took a while. Another official was running downfield with the ball carrier. But the linesman on the near side of the field signaled touchdown. It just has to cross the plane. It appears that it does before he starts to lose it. But again, it's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the ruling of the field. Tough to tell there where the ball came free. It started coming loose. The question is, when did that happen? Well, his right hand comes off the ball. He has it palmed in his left hand, which is, is still in possession. And then he knocks it out of his hand with his other arm. And how about Trey this, Boston? This could go either way. How about Trey Boston, a guy the coach has said, this guy's got to step up in the run game. Makes a Absolutely. big hit here. Absolutely. Andy Panucci is a replay official, and David Epperly, the on-field referee. And, and the officials did what they are taught to do on the field, which is not blow the whistle, make your ruling, but not blow the whistle so that if it didn't cross, that the defense has a chance to advance that football, which they did. Yeah, we saw in the Clemson-North Carolina State game the other night, a player stepped out of bounds. Right. The whistle blew. And in that situation, you, you, you can't replay it if the ruling in the field was out of bounds. That may have cost NC State. I don't know if it had cost them the game, but certainly they'd have been in the game late in the fourth quarter. Had that been a reviewable play or not ruled on the field as out of bounds. This is a difficult call. This could go either way. But they're taking time. It seems like the longer they take, the more likely there's a reversal because then they're looking to see, okay, spotted. where was the ball spotted? How much time should be on the clock? Or it could just be that it's that hard to tell. And so replay official Andy Panucci just wants to be exact. Wish they would have taken this much time last week during the Wisconsin-Arizona <laughs> State contest that we were there for. He said the ruling on the field stands, which means not enough video evidence to overturn that. It's a touchdown, and Georgia Tech is on the board. A great drive from David Sims. They used him almost exclusively. Vad Lee takes a big hit, comes to the sideline, gives Justin Thomas credit for coming on and holding the fourth down, but really David Sims was the key man on that drive. True freshman Harrison Butker, the kicker. Puts it through, and it's 13 to 7, North Carolina. Yellow Jackets on the board. The reaction after the ruling on the field is upheld by replay. The Sylvania 300 in New Hampshire, Sunday at 1 on ESPN. Here in Atlanta, early second quarter in the pouring rain, Georgia Tech. Has cut the North Carolina lead to six after a controversial touchdown run. The rolling in the field was a touchdown. Ball came out right as it crossed the plane of the goal line and was upheld by replay. It'll be down and will come out to the 25 for Carolina. Here's Reese. Dave, it's time for an innovative look brought to you by AT&T. Tonight we're going to see LSU take on Auburn. Any similarities between this LSU offense and previous ones would be greatly exaggerated. Zach Mettenberger's quarterback rating's been great as you see him hit Odell Beckham. Cam Cameron's revamped the way the offense attacks. We'll see if Auburn can slow them down on ESPN tonight. And Reese, that's what Brian was talking about earlier about Cam Cameron and his influence on Mettenberger and the LSU offense. More explosive this year. 
Carolina with a first down on its 25-yard line. A play fake for Renner. On the rollout. And his pass low. And Ebron made the catch, but minimal gain. Let's check in with Tom. Well, guys, in case you can't tell, it's starting to come down here pretty good. And now it comes down to how can you grip the football. When you've got a wet ball, the newer the ball, the more slick the ball. So you've got to make sure that you palm the ball better with your palm as opposed to having space with your fingers give you a little bit more control on it. You can continue, Tom. They just stop. The you know, right review. now, as I'm looking Rolling at Bryn Renner in North Carolina, path. they're choosing to use a bit of a newer ball. So they're really relying upon that umpire with the towel. He's got the towel over the ball. Try and keep it as dry as he can. It's going to get wet. It's going to get heavy. So it changes your grip altogether. It's starting to really come down. And they're going to look here, uh, Tom, at the last play to see whether Ebron caught it or not. Ruling in the field is a catch. And no, that's not a catch. Yeah. Our spotter, J.D. Rutledge, was all over it. <laughs> well, I think uh, to Tom's point, the officials really have to do a good job of cycling new balls in. And the thing that gets difficult for the quarterback, and it's more of, a, of an issue for Bryn Renner than it is for Vad Lee because they're not really throwing the ball that much. But the issue becomes you, get, you never know what you're going to get until that ball comes up from the center. Is it a new ball? Or is it a ball that's been out here for three or four plays that has a lot more moisture on it? So really, as a quarterback, you're assessing that ball as you drop back in your uh, in your drop to say, I need to grip it one way or the or the other. And, and when you get balls that are really wet versus balls that are new and are dry, it's difficult sometimes to know so quickly. How about for the receivers, the, the challenge there, catching a wet ball? Very difficult. I mean, it's more difficult on the receivers than it is on the quarterback, honestly, because that ball's coming in. A lot of guys, when their hands and their, their gloves get so wet that it's very difficult to get traction on that ball. So you'll see a lot of guys take the gloves off when it's raining, and it's kind of counterintuitive. You know, Brian, I think psychologically, too, with some guys, whether it's a wide out, whether it's a tight end or the quarterback, you, you start to wonder and you start to worry. I, you know, I can't control the ball. I'm, I don't have the ball speed and the power behind it. And now my accuracy might waver, and it can play a role. Well, I, I think what you have to say in your mind as a quarterback is the defense has to play on the same field, too. That was obviously an incomplete pass, and, and that was confirmed. But the defense really has trouble changing direction as well. So you're going to have a little bit more cushion, a little bit more leeway in throwing the ball to your receivers. Can apologize. The, the ref mic is going in and out. We'll do our best to give it to you straight from David Epperly's mouth to try to read lips and relay it to you. So it is incomplete. So second down and 10 on the 25-yard line of North Carolina. Green Renner is 7 of 14 passing for the touchdown. True freshman Bud Howard to the top of your screen. He's from Georgia, 6'5", 200 pounds. And Renner, Ebron wide open in the middle of the field. All the way to the Georgia Tech 40-yard line. A 35-yard gain. Play action is the way that they try to get Ebron open. Take a look at the linebackers coming up for play action. And he's wide open at the best player on the field. And Georgia Tech lets him run wide open down the middle of the field. Here's a throwback, and now Blue going to fire it deep, and it's high and incomplete. Intended for Ebron. There's a penalty flag on the near side. So a backwards pass to Blue, and then the forward pass that was off target. Defense, number 28, five-yard penalty, first down. It's on D.J. White. How many first and fives has North Carolina how, had? How many penalties have we had in this game? I love the approach, the attacking approach from Larry Fedora. After they give up the touchdown to Georgia Tech, they come right back and attack downfield. Fourth penalty by Georgia Tech. Three on North Carolina. Just inside the Georgia Tech 35. 13-7 North Carolina. There's Blue. He gets spun down at the 31-yard line after a three-yard pickup. Anthony Williams on the tackle, so second down and short. North Carolina continues with the up-tempo. Go four wide. And it's Blue again. He gets upended. The somersaults to the first down. 
at the 26 yard line. Smith made the hit. Blue hung out of the ball. And that's that's the kind of balance that they've got to have. They've got to be able to throw the ball down the field to Ebron or to Quinshaw Davis and then come back and get a first down, run the ball two times in a row, give Ebron a little rest on the sideline. At the 26 yard line, Renner pulls it back. Looking downfield, airing it out. Incomplete. He had Chris, or Lewis Young rather, defending. Yeah, and Young just got there in time. That ball's a little bit late. They ran a double post with Ebron on the inside and Tarpley on the outside. And that ball's just a little bit late. Probably it's more difficult to throw that wet ball down the field and get that drive to get there on time. So it's second and 10 for North Carolina, which has lost seven straight here at Georgia Tech. Last win, Bobby Dodd Stadium, 1997. They got a corner coming off the edge, and Cummings drags down the quarterback, Bryn Renner. So not much on second and 10, third and long coming up. Renner needs a towel. Wipe off the hands here as he slid. Face first onto the ground, third and eight coming up. This is where a towel to number 45 on the edge, the defensive end. Here he is right here. He's going to be rushing. Third and eight, you got to count for him. James Hurst, left tackle, trying to block him. And Renner steps up, trying to run. Now throws. Tapley in traffic, touchdown. What a play by Renner to keep the play alive and then throw a second touchdown pass of the game. Great awareness from Bryn Renner to know where his trouble was and the rush to trust James Hurst, the left tackle, to step up and extend that play and allow Tapley the time to beat man-to-man -man coverage in the corner of the end zone. Tapley, one of their best receivers, five touchdown catches last year. That's his first touchdown of 2013. High snap. They get it down to the point after, makes it 20 to 7, North Carolina. And you have a great pass rush. You take a deep drop, step up, and then you've got time. Extend the play, keep your eyes downfield, and perfect throw to Tapley for the touchdown. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by the all-new 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander and Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Number 19, Nick Myler. Back to receive for the 100th year of Bobby Dodd Stadium, the oldest venue in college football, historic Grant Field. Georgia Tech. Team in 2 and 0, considered a challenger in the coastal, struggling on defense. Giving up three touchdowns. Jamal Golden on the return for Tech. And Golden breaks a tackle across the 30 yard line. They finally get to him. The kicker, Nick Weiler, tracks him down from behind at the 45. Well, we went deep into the archives for this. Had to get some dust as well off of Tom Luganville's highlights. Look at the feet in the pocket oh, by Luganville. Fake. And then the accurate throw. Look at that. And then look at this here. Backpedaling. Oh, he's just showing off. Toying with the defense. <laughs> and a strike by Luganville in his one year here at Georgia Tech. Wow, he looks a little bigger today than he did back then. Bigger where? <laughs> In all the right places. Out of the diamond, Lee fumbled it. And picks it up and gets about a yard. Hey, guys, I was a swelt 160 pounds, <laughs> mind you. Uh, a swelt 160 pounds, mind you. I just want you to know that. And it was on the old school Asher turf. Grease, you're too young to remember that stuff, man. <laughs> Those are good times here, man. It seems like 19 years ago. I can't believe it, to be honest with you. And I got to be honest with you, during that year with my junior campaign, it didn't rain one time. <laughs> Here's Godhai trying to cut it back, wrapped up near midfield. The game of fourth, third down coming up. First, here's Reese Davis. All right, guys, I'm still sort of stunned from seeing Luganville. Georgia and North Texas, the longest pass play in Georgia history was Buck Baloo to Lindsey Scott. 
Not anymore. Aaron Murray to Reggie Davis. Run, Reggie! Run, Reggie! Oh, he's going to be some property damage in Athens tonight. 98 yards, 14-0 Georgia. After a gain of three, it's start down in five. Reese all fired up back there in the studio. <laughs> Big third down and five here for Georgia Tech. Lane still falling hard here in Atlanta as Lee got a throw. And boy, that was poor. He would have got wide open. Try to hit DeAndre Smelter. There was a little pressure. Yeah, it was a difficult throw in the rain. Deep comeback like that, and you got pressure in your face. That's uh, not, a, not an easy throw to make. I've been impressed with the development of Vad Lee from a year ago throwing the football. Now, he's not certainly where he wants to be, nor where Paul Johnson wants him to be, but all things considered, with his athleticism and the way that he runs the option, uh, he's, he is the best passer that they've had under Paul Johnson at Georgia Tech. So you, you didn't feel that, that poor was the right way to describe uh, that pass there. Rugby kick that's a line drive and fair caught at the 10. That was the pencil neck geek way to <laughs> look at the quarterback. It's all right. Okay, get a shot in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Story coming into this game was how well could North Carolina's defense play this option game. So far, so good. They crashed with the defensive end to take the dive. They've had cut blocks where they've had to beat on the line of scrimmage. Travis Hughes beats that cut block, and then they've had great leverage on the perimeter. Jabari Price, the corner on this play, force the pitch, have the right leverage on the outside, and then come up and make the play. I've been really impressed with Carolina's defense, the approach that Vic Coning has taken, and today, 88 yards on the ground, very impressive. Meanwhile, the number two quarterback, Marquise Williams, is in. North Carolina always gives him reps in a game, and he hands off to true freshman Chris Francis, a gain of about three on the play. Sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Played in nine games last year, threw 17 passes, and also had three rushing touchdowns. They'll keep him in for second down and seven. And their own form of the diamond formation here. Except for the tight end and a wide receiver. And here's the tailback, Francis. Moving ahead of the 19. That's a four yard gain. And Renner comes back in. So they have some options here at third down and three. Run pass. Carolina three of four on third down today. They scored 20 points so far, three touchdowns, a total of four between the two teams last year when they met. 16 total touchdowns. Renner. And out of the backfield, it's blue, and he gets a block. First down and more. Cut down at the 36-yard line by Lewis Young. Great read on third down from Brent Renner. Sees the collapse of the defense in, on the outside, and that's just too easy. Georgia Tech has got to account for the flats. We've seen a number of times just that easy swing route has netted yards for Carolina. That was a 17-yard pass play. Back to the ground on first down. Big hole for Blue. And another Carolina first down. 11-yard gain before Jamal Golden gets A.J. Blue to the ground. This is, a, this is a big drive, Dave, for Georgia Tech defensively. They've been on the field quite a bit. Can they get a stop? Here's Blue again trying to pick a hole and dives to the 49-yard line. Three-yard gain. Jamia Thomas on the tackle. And coming into this season, the question mark really was for Georgia Tech, this defense. Could they continue to grow and could they play their assignments? You know, they were playing a 3-4 defense a year ago without grow. Now you bring in Ted Roof and it changes to a 4-3 and tries to simplify things. And so far in this game, they've been on their heels. Renner going to throw it deep down the seam. Broken up, trying to hit Ebron. It was deflected and it's... And bring a third down and seven. Deflected by a defender, or did he just drop it? Let's no, see. This is well thrown right on yes. the money, and I think Ebron. It's crowded back there. It's hard to concentrate and catch that ball in the middle of three guys that could come and hit you. And then on top of that, you factor in the rain. Difficult play.
Renner has been excellent on third down pass plays. And lobs one down the sideline here. Incomplete. Well defended by D.J. White. Winshot Davis was the intended wideout. Fourth down. Carolina will punt. And this was a tough, tough throw. And that ball came out of Bryn Renner's hand. Looking a little squirrely. I'd love to throw that on the outside. But that ball is, uh, that's a difficult throw in the conditions. And Hibbard will punt. Jamal Golden was an excellent punt return or kick return man last year with two returns for touchdowns. Is back to receive the punt. And let it sail over his head and into the end zone for a touchback. 5.24 on the clock, second quarter. Tech ball trailing by 13. Brian Greasy. Let's look at our Aflac trivia question. We mentioned Bobby Dodd Stadium, the oldest on campus. What stadium is second oldest? I know that you have been uh, sifting through all of the history books you bring with you on the road to see uh, the second oldest stadium in college football. Wow. You, have a, you have a guess? Boy. It's not the big house. No, though that is old. Give you in the SEC? Yep, raise your hand. And they run Zach Lasky on first down as Bad Lee is back in the game at quarterback. He was not out there for Georgia? the touchdown. I would say Georgia. I don't, I don't think know. so. I don't think so. We'll let that marinate for a little bit for uh, you and the fans out there. Second down and five. Inside five to go. Badly one of five passing. And Lee in trouble. Down he goes. Kareem Martin got him. A loss of one. I think third down here for Tech. Trouble throwing as it is. And the rain continues to pour. Great job by this Carolina defensive front. Getting penetration. There's been a lot of pinch. A lot of uh, misdirection movement by that defensive front that has really kept this uh, Georgia Tech offense on its heels. And now they got him in the perfect situation to bring up third and long where they have to throw the football. They're going to come out in the diamond set. Georgia Tech two of six on third down. Lead a throw and a pass on the money. Smelter with a grab on a first down. They have 10 on the play. Wow, they made it pretty easy to Tim Scott. The corner was soft on the outside and they just run a simple hitch outside. Throw and catch. Gain of eight first down. Why play that far off in there if you're Tim Scott? They're worried about all kinds of other things like the option. <laughs> well, first down, Georgia Tech just shy of its 35-yard line. Sims the first man through. Pin balls off tacklers to the 43. Gain of close to nine on the play. Malik Simmons, a 190-pound linebacker that got the start today, made the tackle. Uh, we were talking with Vic Koning, defensive coordinator for North Carolina, and he said that he's got to have some players step up in this game. He doesn't have the kinds of players that Carolina traditionally has had in the past, some of these NFL-type players, but he's got to use the best that he has. Lee pulls it back and in trouble again. Able to hang out of the ball as he was being sacked. Darius Lipford back at the 37-yard line. It's a five-yard loss. Well, Nathan Staub, the redshirt freshman, was in the backfield as well. Got through the block on the uh, halfback, and Carolina has continually put pressure. You can tell that they decided to come into this game and say, we're going to shoot our gun, take our shot, and, and see what we can do. And so far, it's worked very well. So third and seven. And a design run. Lee out near the first down. At the 44-yard line, looks like he has it. Vic Koning is irate because his defense just gave up a first down and third down and eight. He was so irate this week that he chipped a tooth while biting his whistle. <laughs> he walked into our meeting last night, and, and he showed us his, his pearly whites, and there was a chip. <laughs> so how did that happen? Here's Lee. Another good pick up there. On first down there, there look at the, the front tooth oh, to the left there. He said 
He couldn't believe it. He, he actually he, he thought something. He thought he had broken the whistle. He spit it out, and it was his tooth. <laughs> he's a heck of a football coach, and he's he's very intense, and he's be the first one to admit that he's been pretty hard on this defense, especially after the way that they played a year ago. And he said, sometimes I've been too hard on them, but they are responding today in fine fashion. Second and three, lead of the air. Open man inside the 40-yard line is Darren Waller. And steps out at the 32-yard line, a 17-yard gain. Remember, Georgia Tech had to use a pair of timeouts earlier, so just one remaining for the Jackets. Darren Waller is a guy that, that they've got to get involved in this offense. He's very big, six foot five, 225 pounds. Not the fastest guy, but he's the guy they want to get the ball to down the field off of play action. They've always had that guy, right? Going all the way back to Calvin Johnson and Demarius Thomas and Stephen Hill. You've got to have that guy on the outside that can really fly and, and catch the ball. Of course, different offense when uh, Calvin Johnson was here under Chan Gailey. Lee dumps it off to Bostic. Third straight completion for Lee. And Bostic pinned at the 25. Seven yards. Here's Reese. All right, Dave, Lex's halftime report coming up. Braxton Miller not playing for Ohio State, so Kenny Guyton on that screen there is just setting a Buckeye record. We'll tell you about that. Teddy ball game in Louisville. They are rolling easily. Get you up to date on all the scores and highlights when you guys finish the first half. All right, Reese, and a timeout here called by North Carolina. North Carolina. Their first quarter timeout, the half, 30 second timeout. Attack. You can do that. If you want to build the Iron Man suit, you're in George Attack. You can do that. If you want to play theme music during your convocation speech, like a <laughs> we're in George Attack. We can do that. I am doing that. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville at Georgia Tech at Historic Grant Field, Bobby Dodd Stadium, oldest on campus stadium in FBS. What stadium is second oldest? Uh, Davis Wade Stadium, Mississippi State. Only by a year there. I would, I would not have guessed that one. Neal, how old is Nealon Stadium? You're asking me to, to say that off the top of my head? Like, I know that. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> All-star spotter here. <laughs> J.D. Relich. Get to work, oh, J.D. Yeah. Second and three on the Carolina 25. And Lee will keep. And Lee goes down. Not much there. Maybe a yard. So it'll bring up third down. Or Keith Otis made the tackle. Well, Georgia Tech only has one timeout left here in under a minute. They need to get to get this ball down the field. They'd love to get a touchdown before halftime. And they got a true freshman kicker who's one of three on the year. Here's Sims able to get the first down. That'll stop the clock for the moment. Remember, just one timeout for Georgia Tech. It stops the clock, but they need to get up on the line of scrimmage and get the play called and snap this ball as soon as they possibly can. They wind it on the ready for play, so we're inside 40 seconds to go in the half. And Lee going to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Darren Waller with the catch. This is the element that Bad Lee brings to this Georgia Tech offense. And under pressure, takes a big hit there. He knows that Darren Waller is six foot five, and he puts it way up there and makes him stretch to catch that football. I don't think that Tim Scott, the, deep, the corner, thought that he could get that high. He thought he might have a, an interception in the back of the end zone. Great play by Waller. 6'5 against 5'11, 6'5 wins. And Buck here for the point after. And Georgia Tech again within six as Bad Lee throws his seventh touchdown pass of the year. Back in Atlanta where it's been raining now for a couple of hours. 14 points for Georgia Tech. Trails Carolina by six. Five touchdowns scored. Still 11 to go to catch last year's. 68-50 game won by Georgia Tech. 
in Chapel Hill. Tech is back at it on Thursday on ESPN, hosting uh, Virginia Tech, and then the next game will be at Miami. They also have to go to Clemson. Yellow Jackets do not play Florida State. North Carolina has East Carolina next week before resuming ACC play in Blacksburg against the Hokies. Here's Tapley on the return. And he's grabbed and brought down at the 20-yard line. Paul Davis with a special teams tackle. This week's Saturday Night Football has two games available nationally. You can see Devin Gardner and number 15 Michigan taking on UConn. And Mac Brown and Texas against Kansas State. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows. And obviously Mac Brown, I don't even want to use this, the term hot seat. Uh, what do you think? They need defense, right? I mean, they, they've given up over 900 yards on the ground in the last two games. BYU and, and so I, I just think they've got to play better defense. Morris wrapped up and dropped by Cummings. I would like to go be the final play of the half. That was a big touchdown. That was a big, sorry, Dave, a big touchdown for Georgia Tech before the half. They have not played their best football, and you go in at halftime and only down seven and not having played your best football, you got to feel pretty good about that if you're Georgia Tech. And for Carolina, they got to feel really good. They played very well. Georgia Tech gave up 257 yards in total offense, 178 through the air for Bryn Renner, playing his best game of the young season so far, looking like the quarterback we saw a lot towards the end of last year for North Carolina. Bad Lee with a touchdown pass for Georgia Tech. And two touchdown passes by Renner. Here's Tom. Coach, defensively, significant improvements from a year ago. Tough to play the cut block. How would you characterize the performance of your defense? I think defense is playing great. They're, you know, they've given up 14 points here. They put together a good two-minute drive there and hit us with some things. But we'll come back and play harder in the second half. Obviously, difficult conditions with the weather. Bryn Renner seems to be controlling the football well. What do you like out of your offense? Well, we don't worry about the weather because we don't control it. So, uh, you know, we just got to be more consistent. That's all we got to do. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you. All right, Tom, Carolina leading at halftime, 20 to 14. Lexus halftime report now. Reese, Mark, and Lou in the studio. Dave, I was at This is College Football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. He does. Touchdown. End zone. A one-handed play. Going to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Welcome back to Atlanta. As you're watching the ACC on ESPN, ESPN College Football, presented by Cars.com. Heavy rain here at Bobby Dodd Stadium. And it's 20 to 14 Carolina as we get ready for the third quarter. Our Discover Game Changer brought to you by Discover Card. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy. And it was the defense for North Carolina, which really struggled last year. Did a terrific job in that it, first half. They were the big question coming in. Could they slow down this option attack? And the early returns are absolutely they can. They did it with a lot of pressure, a lot of stunting inside. You see the defensive end crash down on the dive. They did it, beating the cut block at the line of scrimmage. Otis getting by that. Price comes up and makes a nice tackle. And then they swarm to the football. Six guys around Vad Lee, not allowing any rushing lanes for Georgia Tech. And I think it's so far so good for Vic Koning in that defensive front seven for Carolina. Georgia Tech will get the ball to start the third quarter. Yellow Jackets 2-0, Carolina 1-1. Deep kickoff, it will come out to the 25-yard line for Tech. Here's Tom Luganville. 
Guys, I think Paul Johnson has been a bit hesitant to get the ball to the perimeter. You know, they've tried to run up the middle. North Carolina has done a great job taking away the dive from the fullback. But with so many mesh points, Brian, as you mentioned earlier, you're hesitant because you don't want to put the ball on the ground. And then when it comes to pitching the football, you're really worried because now it turns into a potential turnover and negative yardage. So a lot in the heads right now for Georgia Tech. I think it's changed their mindset and not for the better. I think you just got to trust it, Lugs. I think he's got to get to the ball to the perimeter he's got to run the offense that that they run you can't just run the dive because it takes away the symmetry horizontally in this offense you've got to trust that you can execute the pitch on the perimeter first down Georgia Tech on its 25 and badly will hand it off as God high was wrapped up immediately by Kareem Martin no gain on the play I think if you're North Carolina, you continue to do exactly what you did that worked in the first half. You bring pressure. You stunt those defensive linemen. You continue to have that hard presence on the perimeter, whether it's a corner or safety coming down, and force Georgia Tech to get to the perimeter and execute that pitch. Second down and long, and he will pitch it, and it's, it's a, sec a successful pitch. As Godhai spins away from a defender and then lost the ball. Norkethus Otis stripped the football, and Georgia Tech got it back. Ray Bino, the left tackle, with the fumble recovery. Well, we talked about it. Get that ball to the perimeter. you got to hold on to it all the way to the ground in these conditions. Great job by Carolina ripping that ball out. You see how many guys on the inside of that defense? There's six, seven guys in between the tackles, and there's a lane out there if and when Georgia Tech can get to the perimeter and execute that pitch. From the Tech 42-yard line, it's the first man through David Sims, dives to the 45 Davidson for three game. yards. Tackle made by number 90. We know this from Paul Johnson. He's the master of adjustments, even at halftime, but even in the course of a drive itself, he knows the answer. When you're stopping his offense, he knows that there is an answer, and he's one of the best at finding it, so I fully expect this Georgia Tech offense to be better in the second half. His whole resume is built on adjustments, given the little game planning they do over the course of a week, as Lee is in trouble and slammed to the ground at the 43 by Justin Thomason. So it brings up third down and long. Badley is five of nine passing. He has completed his last four passes. We'll see if they let him pull the trigger here on third down and nine. I'm surprised that Georgia Tech has not gone to some of their speed sweep game. They do have that element in this offense. And with so many Carolina defenders packed inside, it's open for them. Now, remember the last third down, they converted with a soft corner. Lee to the air. Steps up in trouble. He fumbled the ball. And again recovered by a Tech offensive lineman. It's Brian Chamberlain, the right tackle. So two fumbles on this drive. None lost, but Tech will have to punt. Carolina did a nice job, and they rolled up on the outside, took the easy throw away, and then got pressure with Otis. Tech lucky they got to fall back on that football. Now Carolina continuing to get pressure on the quarterback. It's a veteran offensive line for the most part with a pair of three-year starters and then the right guard Shaq Mason, who's a junior. The coaches feel is their best offensive lineman. Poole will punt it away to Switzer. And Switzer across the 10. Oh, gets sandwiched at the 13-yard line. Good on Smith there first for Georgia Tech. Great punt. Switzer brought down by number 27, Lynn Griffin. Brian Gracie, Tom Luganville, Dave Pash back in Atlanta celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal. And that's Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds. For each field goal and extra point kick to date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship monies. First and 10 for North Carolina. It's opening possession of the third quarter. On the Tar Heel 13 yard line, Morris trying to cut it back. And he's up to the 17, and Talchu brings him down. What adjustments 
do you expect from Georgia Tech here in the second half on D? Well, I think they've got to find a way to contain Eric Ebron, the, the tight end. He's got five catches over 100 yards, and, and he's a player that's very difficult to defend, but if he gets down the middle of your defense, he can really make you pay. Runner with pressure coming. Delivers a strike. Off to the races is Ryan Switzer. And the true freshman takes it all the way. An 82-yard touchdown. There is a penalty marker down, though. Back near the line of scrimmage. That's the right tackle, John Heck, who committed the holding violation, negating an 82-yard touchdown pass by Bryn Renner. John Hex, the redshirt freshman. Here he is on a Tauchu. It's been a struggle all day for Heck. And a Tauchu's just got so much speed. And yeah, he got beat cleanly and had to reach out with that right hand. A Tauchu's just got such quickness off the ball. And right there, he pulls, pulls him down. It's a shame. Brings back a beautifully thrown ball from Bryn Renner. And that puts the ball inside the 10 with the rain, the wet ball. Got to really protect the football in this situation. Second and 13. Then we're getting the check from the sideline. Relaying it to his lineman. They shift to the, you know, the back to the other side of the quarterback now. And runner will hand it off to Morris. And he breaks free. Up near the 20-yard line, Jamal Golden on the tackle, so he got a lot of it back after the penalty. About 10 yards on the carry for Romar Morris, replacing Gio Bernard, who left early, as there's an injured yellow jacket. Bernard was a second-round draft choice by Cincinnati. Boy, and he's looked good. <laughs> all, all those defenders in the ACC that watch Monday Night Football and see Gio killing people, they feel a little bit better. Well, ID the injured man when we come back. Free safety Jamal Golden shaken up on the tackle attempt here on Romar Morris. They're already down a free safety. Isaiah Johnson was injured in their bowl game last year with a knee injury. He has not returned. Golden just went to the locker room, and it is pouring now for third down and four. to throw in trouble, sack, better flat. A touch you with the sack. No fumble. And it's fourth down. Let's we'll see what the penalty flag is. It's going to be on Carolina, and Tech will decline. Holding. The offense, number 68. This is That's on James Hurst, the left tackle. Did a good job on Clowney against uh, South Carolina week Defensive one. Defensive players love to play in the rain. They know that if they get to the quarterback, they might get a strip sack fumble, and Jeremiah Tauchu is taking over this football game for Georgia Tech defensively. They cannot block it. And now you have to snap the ball to the punter, who's deep in the end zone, so Connor Fry with his work cut out for him, Tommy Hibbard, the punter. The normal punt returner for Georgia Tech is Jamal Golden. He's hurt, so Tony Zenon is out there. Another penalty flag, one thrown in the end zone. And Zenon has it. Did he signal for a fair catch? Apparently not. No flag down. 41-yard punt, no return. There are two penalty markers down there. One at the 10 and one in the end zone. I absolutely want to make him kick that again if that penalty's on Carolina. Illegal formation and illegal shift. So we'll accept the penalty and make North Carolina punt it again. Well, we, we've seen now lately in college football, these formations for punts have gotten more and more exotic and creative. And I think now they got a little bit too creative, and not only were they not lined up correctly, but then they had an illegal shift. And the last thing you want to do is force your punter to be in this situation again in the rain with his foot backed up on the end line. Well, he is very good. Second team all ACC punter. Tough conditions here. Hard to even see the ball 
Are they raining as hard as it is? A good snap, and Hibbert gets rid of it. And Zenon going to let it roll. Actually works out about four yards better for North Carolina. Georgia Tech will have to start on its side of the field. SEC West rivals meeting tonight. Auburn and LSU. Nick Marshall against Zach Mettenberger. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Auburn and LSU at 745 on ESPN. LSU right now looks like a national title contender on both sides of the ball. Well, see now they're just, yeah, they're just getting into SEC play. We, we don't know a whole lot about LSU yet. I know they beat TCU, but obviously TCU losing to Texas Tech. They don't certainly look as good as we thought they might be. Badly stumbles, now takes off, and gets positive yardage. Kareem Martin on the tackle. We've been calling the D linemen and their names a lot in this ball game for North Carolina. That did not happen in the game last year. They're getting off those cut blocks. Martin's got eight tackles and a sack. And this rain is at a point now. In the first half, it was manageable, but now this rain, as it starts to come down, you start to worry about the, just the quarterback center exchange even, much less you know, operating the option on the edge. Veteran center in Jay Finch, three-year starter, a senior. Lee with the pitch to Godhock. And Godhock gets to the secondary and then twirl to the ground at the 43, a six-yard pickup. Travis Hughes made the tackle, and it's a first down. This is a great opportunity for Georgia Tech. Again, as we said, coming out of halftime, they have not played their best game, obviously, but as bad as it's been and the turnovers that they've had, they're still only down six in this game, and now they're on the side of Carolina and have an opportunity to go up and potentially take the lead in this game. First and 10 at the 43-yard line of North Carolina. And Lee going to keep, and he gets away from the first defender, Tim Jackson, and gets back to the line of scrimmage. The kicking game obviously going to be important in a close game. Remember, North Carolina on its first touchdown elected instead of going for the extra point to fake it, try a two-point conversion, and they fail. If you're going to be here, better have fun, right? <laughs> In the rain since uh, about 10 a.m. local time. Second and nine. Lee with the pitch. Running room for Perkins inside the 30. And finally, Charles Perkins knocked out by Brian Walker inside the 20. That's about 25 yards on the ground. It's the first time we've seen the great blocking that we know and love for Georgia Tech. Take a look at Godhigh on the edge. First they take the dive, he takes the pitch. Godhigh gets the block, and then the receiver, Smelter on the outside, gets a little piece, and that's the first resemblance today that we've seen of this spread option offense of Paul Johnson. Midway way through the third quarter, trying to tie it up or maybe take the lead on this possession. Here's Lee on the keeper. And he gets spun down. Tackled by Justin Thomason. Still a gain of about three. And these guys have been on the field for a lot. North Carolina's defense about 24 minutes so far in this game. Well, second down and seven for Georgia Tech. Lead passing nine times completed five. He had eight completions last week. Four of those over touchdown. They'll run it here. And through the hole is David Sims. Inside the five, down to the three. It's first and goal. It's amazing how you hit one big play on the perimeter and how that starts to open up the interior. And those things just go so well together in this offense. And the entire first half, they didn't have that perimeter element. It was very difficult to run the inside, but now they're starting to open up that lane on the inside for Sims and Lasky. Those guys getting tired of facing the cut blocks on the perimeter? I'm sure they are. First and goal. Lee going to keep. Trying to stretch forward and get at least a yard. Malik Simmons on the tackle, so second and goal. And a Georgia Tech player lost his helmet. It's David Sims, so they'll need a new B back. Well, and that's that's significant that he loses his helmet. I think that's the second time that that's happened to him in this game. But it's significant because 
he's the guy they love to give the football to at 225 pounds down here inside the two-yard line. Lasky, Lasky's a big kid as well, but they really like Sims, and they'll miss him down here. Play clock winding down as they get up to the line here on second and goal. Lee trying to find the hole, and he gets knocked to the ground short of the goal line by Travis Hughes. So it's third down and goal. What do you expect here? We, we've seen inside run plays in first and second down. Now, first thing I think this is four down territory for Paul Johnson. He doesn't want three points. He wants seven. And so I think he's going to call this play like he understands he's got two plays. So maybe you'll see something on the edge. All running plays on this drive. Ninth play coming up. Third down and goal from inside the one. It's a quarterback sneak and bad lead diving. He's in. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Impressive push by that offensive line. No question he gets in there. And that's the way that Paul Johnson wanted to start this second half. Get a stop on defense. How big is that penalty, that holding call on John Heck? Look now, after they threw that ball, and UNC had gone up 13 points, and all back, and now they're down one. And an 82-yard touchdown pass negated because of that hold. So Butker on for the point after to try to give Georgia Tech the lead. And the kick is good. So bad lead with his third rushing touchdown of the season. Gives Georgia Tech the advantage. The Sylvania 300 at New Hampshire. Rainfall continues here in Atlanta as Georgia Tech leads it 21 to 20 after a bad Lee rushing touchdown in the extra point. North Carolina had a box extra point in the first half. Midway through the third quarter. Carolina trying to win its ACC opener for just the second time since 2000. Georgia Tech won its ACC opener last week, beating Duke. And Tapley will run it out for North Carolina. Tapley across the 30-yard line and up to the 37. Let's check in with Reese Davis now in the studio. David will let you know what's going on elsewhere on ESPN2. San Jose State's trying to hang in with Minnesota, though the Gophers trying to stretch it out. On ESPN News, UMass not very good, and Vanderbilt sleepwalking big time, and Marshall still trying to hold on for that big upset on ESPNU against Virginia Tech. 37 yard line, first and 10. I'm not surprised that I think it was Herb Street that picked uh, Marshall to win that game. On uh, game day, day, what a cool scene that was from Fargo, huh? Oh, it was awesome. Right there on the, was that Main Street or right in the middle of town? Very cool. People hanging out of buildings watching. First down, Renner setting up the screen to Morris. And Morris gets help from his blockers and gets the first down in midfield. A 12-yard pickup on the screen pass. I think if you're Bryn Renner on the sideline before this drive, the message to your team is, look, we moved the ball in this game. We just got to cut out the penalties and be smart, and we can go and score points on these guys. They've run 15 fewer plays than Georgia Tech, but a lot of Carolina's plays have been in plus territory. And he's got to help out his tackles. He knows where his problem is in blocking a tackle to stay out of third and longs and manage those situations as a quarterback. And there was some movement. A five-yard penalty. Brandon Turner, the right guard. He's right here. After the penalty, that brings up first. Just, just a little ball. flinch. We had a Tauchu in the area and Adam Gotsis, who, by the way, is from Australia. It's about to five in the morning back there. His relatives had to get up, not only watch the game, but pay for it to be able to see it. His runner is in trouble. Fires. Oh, another one-handed catch, and then the ball comes out. Recovered by Georgia Tech, but it's rolled incomplete. Ebron got drilled as well. So did Renner. Ruling in the field is incomplete. Renner has such confidence in Ebron's ability to catch the ball. I mean, that's just an unbelievable play. And I'm not sure that wasn't a fumble. 
And then it looked like Ebron got hit on the back of his head with a knee. Talcha was coming in and hit him on the back and hope that uh, Ebron is all right. But did he catch this ball? He controlled it, had two feet on the ground. They might take a look at that upstairs. There was Dominique Noble that knocked it free. And then Brandon Watts with the immediate recovery just in case they go to replay here. Ebron shaken up. They have not buzzed from, down, uh, from upstairs as of yet to look at it. So Eric Albright is in. Jack Tabb is the normal backup tight end, but he's suspended today. They're down to one tight end. North Carolina taking a lot of time here, giving the replay a little bit more time to look at it. I would have snapped that ball in a hurry. Second down and 15. The quick pitch. Morris cut down. Noble, who's replacing Jamal Golden, who was shaken up earlier, has made a couple of plays here. And he's coming in at safety. He's a sophomore who's a nuclear and radiological engineer. Well, and now they've gotten right into that position where they don't want to be third and long, where Jeremiah Talchu is at the top of the screen. They've got to account for him. Runner, an awkward snap. Runner hit again, and the pass incomplete. It would have been short anyway, intended for Mark McNeil. And it's fourth down. Three new offensive linemen up front, and they bring the pressure, and it's the floodgates on Bryn Renner. You try throwing the ball from that pit. That's an awful feeling <laughs> right there. Jeez. Well, Hebert will boot it away to Zenon. He's in there again for Jamal Golden. drive kick and Sennon dangerously grabs it with the ball on the ground as the gunner Matt Collins was right there but it's Georgia Tech ball 44 yard punt no return she's at Georgia Tech after the Yellow Jackets had just 48 yards they came alive offensively in the second quarter and now they have the lead 21-20 there's a touchdown pass by a runner for North Carolina that was called back because of a holding penalty. Bad Lee hands it off to Godhigh, slammed down after a gain of three. Here's Reese. Well, 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 Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. Look what's happening about an hour and a half or so down the road from you guys. North Texas and Georgia, that is a block punt from Marcus Trice. Zach Whitfield recovers. Two special teams touchdowns for the Mean Green in this one, and they are tied with the number nine Bulldogs in the third quarter. Wow. Mean Green are no joke. Here's Lee. And he's got the first down up to the 20-yard line. Jeff Schottler, a walk-on, made the tackle. Nine-yard gain and a first down. Well, this is a week, Brian, where a lot of teams are overlooking opponents and looking ahead to next week because it's not a great schedule. You don't have a lot of conference matchups. And Georgia now finds itself tied. It's hard week to week. You know, these are 18, 20 year old kids. It's hard week to week to maintain that laser focus and not overlook when you've got such big games coming up next week, the following week. It's hard. First down of the Tech 20. And Lee with a pitch to Dates. Oh, a great tackle by Tim Scott at the 22 yard line. Otherwise, Sinjin Days is still running. And that's what we said coming into the game. Can they tackle on the perimeter? Play the cut block. There's the cut block. And Tim Scott still plays it. Very well done. And these, these are difference making tackles because that could be a 25, 30 yard gain if he doesn't make that stop. It's got to be hard on those corners playing in, against this offense. Well, they, listen, you know that you're not going to be playing the ball in the air a whole lot. So, you know, put on another uh, few more bigger pads and make sure your mouthpiece is in and strap it up because you're going to have to make tackles on the edge. Knee pads. Second and eight. Got high on the pitch. First down and more. Got high across the 40. They finally track him down near the 30-yard line. A big run for five foot seven, 190-pound Robert Godhigh. This kid is the heart and soul of this offense. When they need a play or they need a block, they give it to him. And there's the sweep. 
very well blocked on the second level and then he's just got those moves he's not the fastest guy in the world but he's compact and very strong in the lower body and arm tackles are not going to bring him down do you see Shaquille Mason way downfield blocking that linebacker he's awesome to watch on film he cleans guys up all over the field he's the right guard for Georgia Tech first down after a 48 yard run here's David Sims into the pile and down to about the 27 yard line a three yard gain when you look at the offensive lineman 285 295 305 that's an ideal weight right to play the system well 300 pounds is big in this offense because they asked them to get downfield and block on the second and third level and you'll see Shaquille Mason get down and block safeties and block corners and he's very agile and effective on that level even though he's as big as he is 18 straight rushing plays by Georgia Tech including a sack second down and seven Lee with the pitch to Boston and a good tackle in space again by Tim Scott Boston on the carry so third down coming up inside a minute to go in the third. A big third down here. It's in that range where Paul Johnson is still comfortable running the football. And you got to believe in the conditions that we have today with so much rain. Even if they don't make this, they may go for it on fourth down. Been a while since we've seen a pass from Lee. He has completed his last four. Georgia Tech, 6 of 11 on third down. Third and five here. Play clock at two. And Lee keeps. And does not get the first down. Gang tackled at the 21-yard line. Devontae Brown, the first man there. Didn't appear to get it. We'll see where they spot it. Initial signal is fourth down. We'll see what Paul Johnson decides to do when we come back. One-point game as we go to the fourth. You were born an original. Saturday Night Football with two games available nationally, presented by Windows on ABC or ESPN3. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Connecticut host number 15, Michigan, and Devin Gardner, Kansas State, and Texas, the other contest. Michigan, a scare last week against Akron, but Wolverine's able to survive. And How sweet does that 98 look on a quarterback? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, if a Michigan man accepts it, like you, I then I'm sure it. it's okay with... As Georgia Tech hustles to the line, trying to catch North Carolina off guard. There's movement all over the place. Carolina may have come across first. Will Jackson, the left guard, definitely moved. But there may have been encroachment prior to that. <laughs> it's really, everybody's pointing at each other. It was fourth down and one. And... They were playing possum. They were waiting, and then they just jumped up there. Yeah. That's Tim Jackson. There it is. There it is right yeah. there, yeah. Smart play, too, by Will Jackson when Absolutely. that happened. Right? Absolutely, because that defense could get back on their side, but the offense, once they come off, that's a penalty. So first down, 137 rushing yards in the third quarter alone for Georgia Tech. Here's a pitch to Bostic. Can't get outside. How about the play of corner Tim Scott, who's really stepped up and made some nice plays in space against the run, a four-yard loss. There's no question that uh, they, they got in the year of Tim Scott. Probably Vic Koning said, look, this game, a lot of this game is going to come up to how we play on the perimeter, how physical, and what kind of attitude that we play with from a secondary standpoint. And Tim Scott has answered the bell today. So second down and 14. Here's Bad Lee on the keeper. Breaks a tackle. And then finally slammed to the ground at the 13 and fumbled the ball. Kareem Martin forced it. Kareem Martin's got the ball, too. And the officials are saying it's Carolina ball. Martin with the fumble and the recovery, taking it away from Bad Lee. Ruling on the field is a fumble. The officials are discussing it still. Let's see. He's down. Uh, he's down, and that ball had not come out yet. They just changed it, too. They just changed the on-field ruling. Well, they're talking about it again. I think they're still going to give it to Carolina. Well, 
They're going to review it, obviously. Martin came in and punched the ball out, and it looked like Van Lee was losing control of that ball, but it didn't come completely out before he hit the ground. The officials were discussing it. Ruling in the field is fumbled. They'll review it. Imagine if you could predict an accident before it happened. Introduce. All right, they have overturned the ruling in the field, if you can't hear David Epperly. What happened was Kareem Martin forced the fumble on Bad Lee, but Lee then regained possession, and his knee hit the ground before it came out again. Watch the right hand of Martin. is going to punch the ball out. So right there, you see the ball is out. He's lost possession, but keep rolling here now. He regains possession before the knee goes down on the ground, and I think that's what the official in the booth made that overturn and it looked like it was the right call is that indisputable video evidence for you because the ruling of the field was a fumble uh, yes okay so it is third down and six for georgia tech they've got to figure out the clock here too they had to check the down as well. It is third down. He originally said it was second down, and now they got it right that it's uh, third down. It's third down and six. Ball on the 13 yard line. So third down and six. One minute gone by here in the fourth quarter. And Lee looking to throw, dumping it off for Zen and out on the flat. And Zenon gets inside the 10, close to the first down. Tim Scott on the tackle again. Let's see where they spot the ball. Just past the seven-yard line. Now I would kick the field goal. They're, they're short. I think they're going to measure. But if they're short, I kick the field goal here. Put you up four in a... One point game forced them to score a touchdown. North Carolina has not scored a point here in the second half. 13 in the first quarter and then seven in the second period. And boy, that's close, but uh, they did get a first down. So first and goal for Georgia Tech inside the seven. And a great read from Thad Lee. They tried to throw the ball in the end zone. They had three guys in the end zone. Nobody was open. Rather than forcing that, he dropped it off to his check down on the swing route, and, and Zenning just got enough for the first down. You got Sims behind the quarterback, Bad Lee. And it's Sims to the one second effort. Touchdown! Second rushing touchdown today for Sims. Now an extra point would make it an eight-point game. Remember, Carolina missed a conversion in the first quarter. Eleven play, 92-yard drive. And Butker makes it an eight-point lead. Well, Malik Simmons is a 190-pound linebacker for Carolina, and he just got run over by David Sims right there. Great second effort. Sims gets into the end zone. Georgia Tech has found their rhythm on offense in the second half, and they've done it with their bread and butter, the option game. They found that the, uh, the weakness in this Carolina defense, and they're starting to get the ball on the perimeter, get blocks on the second level. They're cutting at the line of scrimmage. Take a look at these two cut blocks. One by Mason, one by Finch, allow Sims to get to the second level, and then some great cuts on the perimeter by the wide receivers and by the offensive line. Look at Shaq Mason downfield getting some blocks, free and got high on the second level, and they have just started to exert their will, 137 yards rushing for Georgia Tech just in the third quarter. Only seven for Carolina. That's been the difference in the second half. 
The officials stop play before the kickoff. And they say reset the play clock. Carolina's had the ball for 15 minutes. Georgia Tech for 31 so far in this game, yet it's only an eight-point contest. Carolina led at one point 20 to 7. See what Bryn Renner can do. He looked really good at times in the first half. 11 of 23, but 190 yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. And, and really, it's been the penalties uh, for North Carolina on offense. The one big touchdown call back, they put themselves behind in the down and distance, and when they've been in third longs, they haven't been able to block Jeremiah Talchu. Uh, but make no mistake, Carolina's got plenty of offense to get back in this game and potentially tie. How deep can Butker get it? Tapley's a dangerous return man who's had a good day so far. He'll get a shot here, straddling the goal line. And Tapley threw a gap at the 20-yard line. Out to the 35. Let's check in with Reese. Guys, we get you up to date on what's going on in Athens. 21 all against North Texas. As I told you, the Mean Green, a couple of special teams touchdowns. Aaron Murray patiently finds Aaron, uh, Arthur Lynch. Murray would pay it off with a one-yard touchdown run. 28-21, but North Texas is moving the ball a little bit on Georgia. Wow. Here it's 28-20. Georgia Tech on top. Penalty flag. We go block in the back. Now the moisture impacting uh, the whistles, we're told. So we're well, unable to hear David Epperly there. But a block in the back negates a good return by Tapley, and that'll put the ball inside the North Carolina 10-yard line. Well, the one thing that uh, North Carolina has going for them on offense is looks like they're going to get their best player, Eric Ebron, back. Remember, he got hurt. It looked like shaken up on that incredible behind-the-back catch that he made. And, well, he's back out there, and Grim Renner needs him for sure in this fourth quarter. He's a talent, huh? That touchdown catch he had in the first half. Wet ball and everything, and he caught it basically with one hand. True freshman tailback Chris Francis in the game. He's in there with the ball deep. Carolina's on in. Mention time of possession. Tech doubling up North Carolina. First down of the Tar Heel eight yard line. Atalchu standing up at the right outside linebacker position. They're going to run it here. Francis able to get the corner. And then thrown out of bounds at the 13 yard line by Adam Gotsis. So a nice play there in first down. What you're seeing from Georgia Tech, the way that they are defending Ebron is they're putting one of their best players, a corner, Jamia Thomas, over him in the slot at times to double team him. Now he's attached at the bottom of your screen. On second down and four, quick throw to the flat, wide receiver screen, and Tapley has the first down. Out to the 26-yard line, a 12-yard pickup. Demond Smith on the tackle. This is how North Carolina supplements their lack of a running game as they throw these quick screens and bubble screens. It's an extended sweep. Effective. They run it here. And Francis between the tackles slams it up in there and gets to the 30-yard line. It's a small back, about 190 pounds, but not afraid. Euclid Cummings on the tackle. Four-yard pickup. Second and six now. Got a Talchu standing up on the left side of the defensive line. There's a little shovel pass to Ebron. Broken tackle. And Ebron up past the 40-yard line. Jamia Thomas shaken up after making the tackle on Ebron. He's maybe their best defensive player, and he's down. Well, he's playing man-to-man. -man. Jamia Thomas, their best cover guy. He's playing man, even though it's a tight end. He's giving away a lot of size. They're asking Thomas to cover the best threat for North Carolina. And so far, he had not had an answer. And an official timeout. The Tech players didn't realize, I don't think the coaches did either, that Thomas was shaken up. They only had 10 guys on the field. And Thomas is hurt, though, so he's got to come out here. He's got to come out at least for a play. And I guarantee you, Larry Fedora and Blake Anderson are talking with their quarterback, Bryn Renner, to say, look, their best cover guy is out of the game. He might want to take a shot with our best player, Ebron. So first down at the North Carolina 43. 
The true freshman Chris Francis stays in the game, flanking the quarterback. Inside 12 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Georgia Tech hoping to be a contender in the Coastal Division of the ACC. He needs to get things off to a good start here at home in conference play. As runner with a long throw. And out of bounds. There's some pressure in the face of the quarterback that time. Emmanuel D.A.K. Stop raining. Here in Atlanta finally after uh, about three and a half hours of it. Now it's actually picked up again. Not as bad as it was when we started the second half. And Thomas is back in the game right here in the slot. On Ebron. We'll see if they look that way here on second and ten. Tech brings the safety down. That's Dominic Noble into the box. And Renner stepping up. He's in trouble running around. Gets away from two defenders and throws it deep. Incomplete. Broken up by Young and a flag. Winshot Davis, the intended receiver. Lewis Young trying to catch up with him. Interfered. Pass interference. On the defense, number eight. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. This is the second time that we have seen Bryn Renner escape and extend the play and make a big play. One on the touchdown to Tapley where he escaped. Now he was boxed into the pocket and managed to get out of the pocket, and Davis did a nice job of flying downfield and gets a penalty. And a clear interference call. Lewis Young had his right hand wrapped around, pulling on the left arm of the receivers. Sixth trip into the Yellow Jacket territory for North Carolina. Down eight points, needing a touchdown and a two-point conversion. They failed on a two-point try after their first score. Morse up the gut to the 39-yard line for three. Brought down by Brandon Watts, the leading tackler for Georgia Tech entering today. Carolina going up tempo. They'll run it again. And Morris driven back. Hard hit at the 38-yard line. So minimal gain brings up third down. You have four down territory here, Brian? Absolutely. Uh, it's it's you're too far to kick the football, and you've got to you've got to get eight points here. And they haven't been able to stop Georgia Tech's no. offense, and you know they're just going to run and take time off the clock. They get it back. A lot of time left in the game, ten and a half. We'll see. Third down and six. Renner. Hands and picked off. Intercepted by Young. Ebron couldn't make the catch. And it's a turnover by Carolina. Play by Jamia Thomas, who was locked up man to man coverage. We have been talking about it all this drive. He was locked up on Ebron, got a hand on that ball, and forced the deflection. Take a look right in the middle of your screen. Just gets a hand in there, 14, and comes up with a huge turnover for Georgia Tech. He's one of the best cover guys in the ACC. A lot of people think. He has a future at the next level, and you can see why, despite the fact that he's given away size to Ebron, he was able to get a hand on that football. Georgia Tech now will take over and lead to pass. And throws a completion to a diving DeAndre Smelter to the 46-yard line. It's a 16-yard game. Don't know if Carolina was expecting a pass. I don't think anybody was expected to pass there. <laughs> did he catch it? Looked like it slid out of his hands. Did he maintain control to the ground? Looked like he did there. And the smelt are really coming on. Baseball player initially, three years, and expects to play this year as well. And they're going to look at this here. I thought he maintained possession of the ground. Well, I think the, the, the ruling on the field is a catch. The question is that the nose of the football touch. The grass. And I think that's what they're going to take a look at. Just depends on if he maintains control the entire way, even if it hits the ground. If he has control of it, it's a catch. That's a ruling in the field. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. 
Georgia Tech trying to hang on with Virginia Tech coming here Thursday and then a road game in Miami. It's an eight point Yellow Jacket lead. On the last play, it was ruled on the field as a catch by DeAndre Smelter. And the ruling of the field stands, even though the ball hit the ground, he maintained control of it throughout the catch. So it's a first down on the Georgia Tech 46. And it's Sims bouncing off of tacklers and then lunging for a first down to the 42. It's a 14 yard gain, Tom. Guys, Georgia Tech is in their normal mode of operation now, and that's maximized when they're ahead. There's confidence on the sideline. You, you see a lot of guys trying to get the crowd involved. But most notably, I think the offensive line of Georgia Tech has taken over in the third and fourth quarter. They're imposing their will on this North Carolina defensive front. And for the game, lose 271 rushing yards now for Georgia Tech. Under 50 in the first quarter. Lasky upended. Nice play that time by the middle linebacker, Jeff Schottmer. So no gain on the play. It's second down and 10. Well, I think North Carolina is starting to fire some of their linebackers in that A gap between the center and the guards to stop that dive. They're going to force Tech to go to the perimeter. And make no mistake that Paul Johnson, when he sees that linebacker makes a play on the dive, the next thing is get to the perimeter. Still raining, but not as heavily as it was earlier in the half. And here is the pitch as Zenon is wrapped up for a loss at the 45 yard line. Thomason was there first. And then coming in to help is the corner Jabari Price, as we've seen often from the Carolina corners. Third and 13 now. I think the third quarter was a very difficult quarter for Carolina on defense. They gave up 137 yards on the ground. But in the first half, they played well. And now in the fourth quarter, they're playing well against this, this offense. They have a turnover, but they get a stop here. They still have three timeouts. They're down one score. They're right in this ballgame. Third down and 13. We'll see what play selection we get here from Georgia Tech. Lee trying to set up a screen, and it's dropped by Lasky. Marquitas Otis defending, and I don't know if the quarterback saw him flash, and so he it altered the throw, but it's fourth down. Well, it was great recognition by Otis to see the screen. He just gets a hand on it, plays off the block. Well, maybe he didn't get a hand, but it was close, but nice recognition by Otis. So Sean Poole not a punt. Not fourth down. Ryan Switzer, that touchdown catch that was called back because of the holding on the right tackle, is the deep man. We've seen a lot of the rugby-style punts from Poole. We also saw a fake punt where he reads and moves to the outside. We'll see what we get here. It will bounce at the two and go to the end zone. So North Carolina will get it. At the 20, when we come back, down eight to Georgia Tech, midway through the fourth. We talk about sometimes games come down to two or three plays. These might be it for North Carolina. A botched two-point try where they had the punter throwing it to the kicker. And then Renner with a completion. This was an 82-yard touchdown, but called back because of holding against the right tackle, John Heck. And then the interception, Jamea Thomas getting a hand in there. Ebron can't catch it. Redirected to Lewis Young. But Carolina only down eight. And they have the ball first and 10 on their 20-yard line. Georgia Tech has scored 21 unanswered points, and they've really amped up the run game. Now 268 yards on the ground. They've almost doubled North Carolina in time of possession. Senior quarterback Bryn Renner had a school record 28 touchdown passes a year ago. Trying to set up a screen here. And Georgia Tech reads it beautifully. Davis on the catch. Brandon Watts on the tackle, a three-yard gain. You got everything you want here. If you're Bryn Renner, the game's on the line. You got the ball all three timeouts. No need to be in a hurry. Just whatever tempo you like. Just got to make positive yards. Rain picking up here in Atlanta. On second down, they'll run it. Morris. And he only gets a yard. Well defended by Atalchu. Georgia Tech's defense has done a really good job here in the second half. It's third down and six. Carolina is going to come back and win this game. It's not going to be because they started running the ball in the fourth quarter. It's going to be their best players, Ebron and Renner, making plays in the passing game. Third down. 
Pressure coming. Renner through the hands of the intended receiver, Tapley. Pass was high. Lewis Young on the coverage. It's four down. Lewis, Lewis, gonna punt. Yeah, Lewis Young had great uh, cover, but look at the jersey. Wow. Got away with one right there. And the hand on the back. That was uh, very fortunate Lewis Young didn't get flagged. And got away with it there, and that forces a punt. Still three timeouts for North Carolina and 6.38 on the clock. Tony Zenon, who had trouble with uh, a punt. Last kick on the return attempt. He's back, and he says, get out of the way. And it rolls and stops around the 28, as Singleton gets there for North Carolina. They're widely regarded as football's first family. Don't miss as we revisit the upbringing of the Manning brothers with never before seen footage and stories from their beginnings in New Orleans all the way to their ascent to NFL superstardom. I can't wait to watch this on Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. SEC story, the book of Manning. So Georgia Tech and Bad Lee back out there on offense. North Carolina forced a punt. On the last possession, that defense has been out there a lot, though. 34 minutes and 11 seconds. From the 28-yard line of Georgia Tech, Lasky, the first man through, bangs forward to the 30 for a couple of yards. Justin Thomason made the initial hit. Notice there also. But Dave, you referenced this defense being on the field an awful lot for North Carolina. You can see it in their body language, too. They're a bit demoralized. They know they have to get the ball back. They have to get it back to their offense, and time is running down on them, but you, you can tell that they're a little bit deflated as far as their overall team morale on the sideline. Well, they got to find some energy because this game is a long way from over. They got three timeouts. There's plenty of time on the clock. They just need to get a stop. You talked about attitude as your number one key to playing against Georgia Tech's offense. We'll see if they still have some. Play fake and then the pitch to God High. Makes the first man miss. And near the first down at the 38 yard line. Otis made the tackle. God High with a nifty cut. Well, Dominique Green, you got to come up and make this play in space. We talked about that. He's your play to make. Here he is right here. God High is a great player, but you got to get him on the ground to save nine yards. And more time coming off the clock. First down for Georgia Tech at the 38 yard line. 520 remaining. It's Lasky, and they wrap him up after minimal gain. Otis there first. These guys got to be gassed on the D-line going against these cut blocks for 35 minutes now. <laughs> well, the only good thing is they only have five minutes left after two weeks of practicing against these cut blocks. I mean, that's, that's tough duty. And give these guys credit, Brown, Martin, all these guys. They have come out, and they've played admirably against this style of, of offense. It's not easy, but they've had the right attitude and approach. 60-second running play coming right now for Georgia Tech. Second and nine. God high the motion man takes the pitch. Finds a cutback lane. Gets the first down. How about Robert God high twice now making defenders miss. Getting first downs and keeping that clock moving. When the game's on the line, I would give the ball to Robert Godhigh. You can trust him. He's not going to fumble that ball. He's got power in his legs. He can fall forward and continue to move the chains. It's been a workhorse for Georgia Tech throughout his career. And a guy that I, I love personally watching because he's so unselfish. He'll do anything for the team, whether that be blocking, catching, pass pro. Doesn't matter. Robert Godhigh is your man. Former walk-on. Now in his senior year. They take the play clock down and give it to the first man through. David Sims powers to the secondary. About the 42-yard line is where Darian Rankin gets him, but it's second down and short. And this is what I'm talking about, Robert Godhigh. He'll be on the right side of your screen. Let it roll, guys. He's going to block two guys. There he is, 25, takes one, takes two. Doesn't matter. He will sacrifice his body for the team, and you've got to respect that about him. Again, Tech just wearing that clock down. They'll snap it with four or five on the play clock. 
Second down and two. 3.17 to go. If they get another first down, we'll see if Carolina starts to use timeouts. And Lee will keep. And he gets spun down short of the first down. Backside tackle by Nathan Staub. So it is third down and a yard. Sinjin Day is shaken up. One of the running backs for Georgia Tech. Short gain on the play. Brings up third down and one. Ball on the 41-yard line. So clock stopped because of uh, the injury. 2.59 remaining. And now the runner. Third down and a yard. Big play for Carolina's defense. Lee on the quarterback sneak. Dies for the first down. First and ten, Georgia Tech. He got the first down, but he paid for it. That's the thing that you wonder in this offense. We were talking with Paul Johnson. Amount of hits on the quarterback, whether it takes its toll, and for Vad Lee, very physical player. You wonder if he can get through an entire season taking that many hits. And Paul Johnson says we've never had a quarterback that has gotten hurt. The only quarterback we ever had that got hurt got hurt because he threw an interception and tried to make a tackle. See if Carolina uses a timeout here after first down. The pitch to Zenon, and he stays in bounds inside the 30. Another first down to the 26-yard line. But the clock will stop as they move the chains and reset the ball. Then they'll run it. And again, Georgia Tech can take the play clock down as the Yellow Jackets are in command. Big picture, Brian. Now that you've seen him on film and seen him in person, your take on whether Georgia Tech can win the Coastal again and play for the ACC championship. Well, it was a little shaky at the start, right? They weren't in sync on offense. And you know, we had a chance to see Miami against Florida, and they won that game. And Florida won that game more because of the turnover. Florida lost that game more because of the turnovers than they did because Miami beat them. And right now, I think the Coastal is anybody's division, whether it be Miami or Georgia Tech. Lee, oh, dangerous. Trying to pitch it there as Zenon. And we got a timeout called by North Carolina. He stayed in bounds. That forced the timeout. Dangerous here. Lee pitching it to Zenon, who was so close to him. Yeah. Able to get his hands on it. Well, you mentioned Miami, and we saw him against Florida, and you talked about how Florida had all the turnovers, and they jumped into the rankings, and I think the perception is that Miami is... Uh, is back and I don't know if that's reality we'll see but, but clearly Georgia Tech a team that has gotten better from last year and we saw him get uh, trounced against Georgia they beat USC in the bowl game just to get to 500 last year well, the biggest question with Georgia Tech was not their offense we know they're going to have production they're going to score points and with the style they're going to be able to compete in the ACC it was their defense and last year their defense couldn't stop anybody and this year in my opinion they're much better Jamea Thomas is a real corner one of the best in this in, this, in the ACC, and I think Jeremiah Talchu continues to show that he can play. And, and I think bringing Ted Roof in as a defensive coordinator, simplifying their scheme, allowing their players to react rather than think all the time. Al Groh's defense uh, was very complicated, a lot of thinking involved. I think we're seeing the benefits of bringing Ted Roof in, and this defense will play much better as this ACC year goes on. They've got Virginia Tech here on Thursday. You'll see it on ESPN. And then they'll go to Miami on October 5th. They also have to go to Clemson and then obviously play Georgia at the end of the year, as they always do. Got high wrapped up. This will force another timeout, one remaining for North Carolina with a minute 34 remaining in the game. Fellas, on that previous play, Paul Johnson really got after Vad Lee in terms of his lack of managing where they're at on the field. He pointed to the clock and said, son, you've got to know where we're at on the field, what the down and distance is, where we're at with the clock, and really got after him. A great life lesson because at the end of the day, the quarterback and the head coach are responsible for game management and most notably in most critical parts of the game. And this is a critical moment for this Georgia Tech offense. And he's learning on the job. He, he played in just about every game last year, but is only his third start at quarterback. He's still very young, very talented, but, uh, but Tom's right. In that situation, you'd rather he just go down than to pitch that football. But 
but the instinct is so hard to go against your instinct because you're coaching badly time in and time out of practice and in games to read the end and pitch it when you get tackled and it's sometimes hard in the in the heat of the battle to make that take all those factors into account the clock and the weather and we're up and I should just go down it's sometimes it's very hard if you haven't practiced that situation 11 play of the drive coming up it's rare that you see a 10 play 47 yard drive <laughs> it's been all run plays trying to eat clock one time out left for North Carolina we'll see if Lee throws it or just fakes and takes off that's what he does and he gets nailed, but great second effort gets him a first down, which may have just won the game. Well, and you talk about learning on the job and learning from Paul Johnson. That's a great example. They call a pass, roll out. They want to throw the ball down the field and get a first down, but Bad Lee takes all that to, into account and says, I'm just going to keep it on the ground. I'm going to take a big shot, a little extra effort, gets a first down, and they can seal the game now. So the running game got going in the second half as you see the reaction from defensive coordinator Vic Conan. It was Tech's defense that really, uh, along with the run game, for the offense, really the story, shutting out North Carolina in the second half. There was an 82-yard touchdown pass called back by a holding penalty, which was a huge play earlier in the half. More college football for you tonight on ESPN. As Auburn meets LSU at 745, college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Zach Mettenberger seems to be really improved at the quarterback position. Looks like Auburn maybe found a QB with Nick Marshall. They've been struggling to find a guy since Cam Newton left. Wow, what do you think about Auburn? I mean, they were so poor a year ago. And they bring in Gus Malzahn, and it seems that they've re-energized. But I'll tell you what, they're, they're going to run into... In my opinion, one of the best teams in all of college football and one of the best defenses that nobody's talking about in the LSU Tigers. What was interesting, remember last year Auburn played Clemson in the first game and actually looked pretty good. Right. And then we had them against Mississippi right. State. It did not look good, and it was all downhill from there. So we'll see if Auburn finishes better than it did last year. Victory formation for Georgia Tech. Lee takes a knee. He'll have to do it one more time. Carolina not going to use its timeout. And Georgia Tech... Will improve to 3-0 and 2-0 in the ACC in a short week with the Hokies coming on Thursday. Larry Fedora's team undermanned only 68 scholarship players and only 66 today. Jack Tab suspended, T.J. Thorpe injured. Those are two key guys in offense for the Tar Heels. They'll be 1-2 and two on the year. Lee takes an knee. And Georgia Tech comes back, scores the final 21 points of the game to beat North Carolina 28 to 20. Georgia Tech, there's no reason why they can't control their own destiny in the Coastal. I mean, I think with the way that they play and improved defense, uh, look out for Georgia Tech the rest of this season. I agree. They do not play Florida State. They. Do we have to go to Clemson in mid-November and then a big game at Miami two weeks from today? And Clemson better watch out for Georgia Tech because it is a unique, it is a unique challenge each and every week. And do you think those defensive linemen from Clemson, who we've all talked about rushing the passer, are going to want to get cut <laughs> by these offensive linemen? All right, here's Tom. Well, guys, coach. What a remarkable turnaround from one half to the next. The adjustments you made on offense, what was the focal point at halftime? Well, we just got our young quarterback settled down a little bit. I mean, it's uh, we missed a ton of reads in the first half, but, and their kids played hard. You settled down on defense, made some adjustments. Assess the play of your defensive front, especially I told you. Well, I think we turned it up in the second half, and then we played the way we need to play. We came out early and got hit in the mouth. Proud of these kids in this weather? Yeah, I am proud of them. They fought, found a way to win, maybe without the best game. Good luck, Coach. All right, thank you. Coach, get a towel. Tom, grab one as well. Final score, 28-20. Georgia Tech beats North Carolina. They double up. UNC in terms of time of possession the Yellow Jackets had it for more than 40 minutes and they run for 324 yards oh and by the way they shut out North Carolina in the second half college football scoreboard is next